Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a new week of Snap Take. I'm Glazer of the Snap Judgments Podcast, and before we go any further, make sure you sub for the best Marvel Snap Takes every single weekday. You're going to get a bunch of content here. You're not going to get it anywhere else. Today, I'm going to go over 10 predictions, 10 takes for the new Marvel Snap season, which is kicking off, depending on where you are, tonight at 11 p.m. or first thing tomorrow morning. I guess lots of other times technically, right? But you, you get the idea at your nightly reset. Okay, we did a big giveaway. We gave away six season passes and one grand prize. As you're seeing this, that announcement is up on Twitter. Go see if you won. But don't unsubscribe. Don't unfollow now. We're doing the same giveaway next month. Slightly different conditions, but the same basic giveaway is happening next month too. We're not done giving you stuff. In addition to the biggest giveaway in Snap, we're going to be doing some smaller giveaways throughout the month, so make sure you keep that going. Further, tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. is a brand new Snap Judgments podcast. We go over the series drops, and we review the last season and preview the next coming season. We've got Savage Yeti over at Savage Yeti Gaming underscore YT for you on that episode. Make sure you check it out. It goes up at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Trying out a slideshow for this, but also make sure you're checking out Snap Judgments. We had Bootman last week. We got Yeti this week coming up in about... Uh, then we have our big tier list episode with Vin, Vin Kelsier over at SnapFan. We're doing a big tier list, the official SnapFan tier list. Then we've got everybody's favorite Marvel Snap creator, KM Best coming on for an episode. We've got Safety Blade coming. We're going to continue to do special things that bring all your f- favorite creators on. Make sure you check it out. All right, that's enough of the promo stuff. Hopefully that was enough that you think you'd like it here and you stick around. If not, we'll miss you, but we're going to keep making great content anyway. All right, so these are 10 takes for the next season of Marvel Snap. Well, as of tomorrow, a bunch of you are going to have your unlock, and I urge you, if you're not real early pool three, save it. As long as you have Rock Slide or Beast, because you already have Korg from earlier, seasons right as long as you have rock slide or beast you want dark hawk at the patch drop in about three weeks dark hawk will become a pool three card as as soon as dark hawk is pool three that's the card you want go get him he's super strong he's in like four of the best decks in the game um some of them require upper pool cards but some of them just require stuff like devil dino that you already have so make sure you're checking out dark hawk this isn't even a take. Like, Darkhawk is easily, at this point, with all the nerfs and buffs, one of the top ten cards of the game. I think he is, at this point, better than Devil Dino. I had Devil Dino either five or six uh, when I did the top ten cards in Snap. I think at this point, because of the versatility, because of the cost, because of Zabu, Darkhawk is a better card. Go get Darkhawk the second he comes down. If you need to sit on your free unlock for two weeks, do so. Darkhawk is the card to get. All right, first take. Nebula's Busted is going to have to be nerfed. This card is crazy strong. This is far and away the most pushed one drop. Makes Sunspot look bad. You play her on one, she can't get any power. On two, she becomes 1-3, 3-1-5, 4-1-7, 5-1-9, 6-1-9, 7-1-9, 8-1-9, 11 That's bonkers, right? Like, absolutely crazy power. A 1-11 if you play her on curb is crazy strong. Is she as good later in the game? No, but hey, the ability to have that power is a premium. It's worth paying a premium. And your opponent has control over whether she gains power, right? That's usually a bad thing in card games. Your opponent can basically say, hey, you're not gonna um you're not going to be able to use this the way you want to. I'm going to be able to stop you. I'll just play cards there. Well your opponent can play four at most five cards there. At that point, she's um she's still a one three one five. Still really strong. Still ahead of curve. Also the ability to control where your opponent plays cards is extremely strong. It lets you know what lanes you're competing for. Remember, you only need to win two, not all three, so you don't have to compete for all three. Nebula alone in one lane means they have to commit to that lane or give up that lane. And as soon as you know which they're doing, your game plan gets so much clearer. Nebula is going to be completely busted. I'm expecting a 1-2 with a plus 1 to be the eventual change, but 
right now, I'm telling you, no matter what deck you are playing, get Nebula in it. She's nuts. All right. High Evolutionary is going to be everywhere. I just did this big take, this big giveaway, right? In it, I asked everybody, what's the card you're looking forward to next season? We've got some Howard the Ducks because he's cute. We've got some Nebula because she's broken. And then like 90% of people want High Evolutionary. Everyone is just assuming 6,000 tokens is what they have to save. They're going to buy High Evo day one. Get ready. Be ready. Have your decks ready. Have your counters ready. Now, a thing I keep seeing people say is that High Evolutionary has to be a deck unto himself. You can't do other things with him. He should just be playing High Evolutionary cards. I think that's wrong. I think there's at least two or three different decks here, and more likely six or seven. This is going to be the most variety we've seen in the game since Thanos, bar none. So, one of the decks we're going to see is a deck that wants to try and get Hulk big. Um, Hulk, as a 16, 18, 24, can just win a game all by himself. It's not going to be as uncommon as you think. I think I know what deck that goes in. The other likely deck is going to be a put a bunch of negatives on the board for a powerful A-bomb. And then when you have that A-bomb, you can do stuff like your hazmat combos with all the negatives. Again, all this is going to be crazy, crazy everywhere. Cool. Mentally prepare yourself. High Evolutionary is going to be a sweet, sweet, sweet card. Um, that's going to have several effects on the game. The first major one is the card of the season is going to be Luke Cage. Luke Cage goes from a nice card you see sometimes to a card that goes in every freaking deck. Get ready for Luke Cage everywhere because one, two, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five of the seven high evolutionary cards pay off from negative strength. Luke Cage turns that off. They just buffed um, Enchantress, and Rogue is still a card, so expect a lot of Rogue, Enchantress, and a lot of Cosmo to counter them. It becomes a game of who sees what when, who can play what when. Big bump to ongoing. Expect Luke Cage everywhere. He's going to be absolutely fantastic, absolutely busted. Pretty soon after that, you're going to have to start protecting Luke Cage because Luke Cage is going to come with um, risk from Enchantress or... Uh, rogue ruining your life, right? As long as Enchantress and Rogue don't ruin your life, Luke Cage is going to straight up counter, turn off the high evolutionary game plan, the high evolutionary deck. So be ready for Luke Cage to be really, really good in the meta. Four, Thanos Lockjaw is, I think, going to be one of the meta high evolutionary decks. He can be built either way with high evolutionary. One of four seven is just a really solid stat line. Sticking that in a deck is not going to hurt you too much. Next, you can either go the I have extra energy, and Thanos very often has extra energy. I'm going to play my Lockjaw game for a giant Hulk, and then you just throw in a couple extra cards for some benefits. Or you can do the, oh, okay, I'm going to run all the negatives and be able to cycle through the mediocre stats of all my negative cards and hopefully get into other cards. Either way, Thanos Lockjaw is going to be back. Thanos is going to be meta every season. This is the most versatile card in the game. I actually just bought this variant. That's part of the reason I'm showing it off. This is one of my like favorite variants in the game. Thanos is one of the best cards in the game. He's going to be meta with High Evolutionary. Get yourself ready to play him. Get yourself ready for um, that play. A lot of people are uh, getting... what They're assuming High Evolutionary is a big bad. They're planning on getting High Evolutionary as their first big bad. You can do that. I still think Thanos is a better card because there's no simple Luke Cage counter, and I expect Thanos to be everywhere. One other thought regarding that, though, is that with Nebula everywhere, we're going to see a rise again in Killmonger. Killmonger is going to have to be there. And with, with the Killmonger comes more armor to protect your Nebula, and then we've got that Enchantress thing. What we're starting to see is a rock, paper, scissor meta developing. Our boy KM Best just went over the rock, paper, scissor meta, rock, paper, scissor meta of Patriot to counter Sandman, um, but then Patriot is countered by all those power last turn decks. Well, we're going to have a secondary Rock, Paper, Scissors meta coming out with this, and we'll see how that shakes out. I think it's going to be really interesting. Nothing is getting overplayed right now. I'm really, really excited for this. Take five, wave goodbye to Patriot. I think Patriot is ultimately going to be the card that suffers most for the High Evolutionary's presence. You can't run both together. It turns it off completely. Uh, as you've got Patriot in a deck, you also have to worry about Enchantress, right? You also have to worry about Rogue. P 
Patriot became the meta deck for about a week, week and a half. It won a bunch of tournaments. I still think it's really good, and but it's been really good kind of forever. The win rate of Patriot is the number one when drawn win rate in the whole freaking game. So that's not going to change at this point. Patriot's going to remain a great, great card. Say hi to my cat if you heard that. Um, Patriot's going to remain a great, great card. But he was never really highly played. I think with all these other things coming out, Patriot goes back to being a really powerful deck that stops being the meta, especially because with the 4-6 Enchantress, he's such an unsafe card. Quake's going to be meta is my next take. Quake is extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, King Koala on our Discord, you can check that in the description to this video, hits infinite using Quake every season. Well, we're finally at a point where Quake is just going to be completely freaking crazy. We've got enough things that benefit from lane control now that Quake is able to fundamentally dominate the game. Quake with Storm is already crazy powerful. One of our viewers already talked about how great Quake and Cloak are together. Awesome combo. We've got Quake and Captain Marvel, Quake and Doom. And now, adding to all that, we'll have Quake and Nebula. You add Quake to Nebula, you can lock down that location. It's a free location win for one. It, it gives you a chance so that the opponent can just no longer play in that location. Nebula will become big enough to usually win that lane. Quake helps you out with another. You add stuff like Captain Marvel and Doom, and good game. I think Quake's going to go from one of the more underplayed cards to like Beast was barely played and then became meta, or uh, Super Scroll was thought to be a bad card and then became meta. Next season, and it's harder to play, so the skill cap might push this down a bit, but next season, Quake is the card that does that for you. All right, our next take is my take for the best deck. I think Darkhawk Stature is the best deck. Um, there are several versions of this. One came from KMBest Discord. One came from this exact version, card for card. Came from our friend Safety Blade. Hey, Safety. Hope you're watching. Hope you enjoy. But this deck's win rate is completely insane, and I see nothing changing it. It'll probably run Nebula. I might even fit in Quake because I'm a jerk, but this should be the best deck. This looks like it's silly. It looks like it's a gimmick, and it turns out that the deck, instead of being a gimmick, is just crazy powerful. In almost 1,500 games on Snapfan, it's got a 63.48 win rate with a 0.5 EQ rate. Untapped, it's got 3,100 games with a 62.1% win rate and 0.52 cube rate. That's enough games. That's a big enough sample that this is not a gimmick. It can get into lanes. It can move cards around. It can control with Shang-Chi and Enchantress. It can mess up your draw with Rock Slide and Korg. It can drop serious power with Black Bolt, Stature, Darkhawk, um, and Spider-Man. This deck does a little bit of everything. It's super strong. It's super consistent. I think this is the best deck in the game. I don't see anything taking it out. I'm debating cutting that Nightcrawler for... Um, Nebula, and if that becomes a thing that doesn't really work because of Killmonger, I'm just gonna cut Night. Uh, I'll cut Nightcrawler and instead just run my own Killmonger. Don't mind killing my Korg. Still worth it. This is how this is the meta right now. And yes, this is an expensive deck. Stature is pull four. Darkhawk is pull four for another couple weeks. Jeff is pull five. You can cut Jeff. Um, and just run Nightcrawler in this and still have a nearly as good deck, though. So don't think you have to have Jeff. Jeff takes it up another level, but he's not a total necessity. Take number eight. Conquest is going to get delayed, I think. I don't want to say that, but I think Conquest is going to be delayed. I think a lot of what they're talking about here is going to be really hard to set up. The no bots in Conquest mode, the um, amount of time you're going to have to wait for games and so on, the different tickets for different levels and redeeming them seems like it's an easy thing to be bugged. I think that this month they're going to announce that Conquest gets delayed. I don't want that. I'm super hyped for Conquest mode, but I'm not sure how they pull this off right now unless they have global matchmaking like right around the corner without bots. And that makes me think that something here is going to be messed up. I hope, hope, hope I'm wrong, but I'm very, very concerned about the timing of Conquest mode. Next up, much like Stature fell down uh, a series last month and became meta, Master Mold is going to fall down a month at the same time Darkhawk goes to three, and I think this is going to be the key deck. Hooglin played this, but it's really, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, Dara's deck. Dara wins a bajillion games with this. 
this deck should look familiar. It's fairly similar to what I think the best deck in the game is, right? It's instead running a Ronin package instead of running the discard package, but it's got the extra benefit of the Sarah and Doom. I think there's a few ways that this deck can end up being tweaked with cards like Enchantress, although more dangerous given the extra ongoings, with potentially uh, Maximus to pump up that Ronin if you don't see Master Mold and so on. Um, I think Lizard could easily become... I think Lizard could easily become Jeff, um, and I think every deck wants to run Nebula, but he, neither here nor there. I think this deck is a meta deck. I think Master Mold is a really powerful card. I think I was wrong about Master Mold. I thought he'd be okay, and I think this is still like a version of this is his only real good deck, but I do think this deck is absolutely super strong. So please check out this deck when Master Mold comes down. I'm not a thousand percent sure I'm using my tokens on it, but let's uh let's be honest i likely am except that take 10 next season is gonna blow this season away and i think that's emphasized in two cards i don't think the next season pass card is quite as good but i think spider ham and spider-man 2099 are both reasonably busted spider ham's on reveal turn the highest card in your opponent's hand into a pig keeping its power and cost is completely nuts it basically says your card becomes a new abilities card. It keeps the power and cost, right? So, you like, your 6-7 Ultron is now useless. Sorry, your 6-7 uh, Onslaught is now useless. Your Sarah is a 5-4 that does nothing, etc., etc. It's hard for me to imagine this card being printed as is, but if Spider-Ham remains a 1-1, I think that Beast Bounce is going to become a absolute meta deck. I think this changes the game completely. Spider-Ham should be the most powerful card, immediately knocking Nebula off the most, most powerful one drop, but knocking, like, kind of the entire game on its head and the entire play patterns on its head, it's very hard for me to imagine Spider-Ham. Spider-Man 2099 is a 4-5. will depend on if it only triggers if it moves once, but if it's the first time it moves to any location, like if it moves to one location, then another, it kills two cards, that would be crazy, crazy strong. Even as a non-on-reveal, I kill one thing, it's still super strong. It's a 4-5, right, that basically removes power from the board. So it's a 4-5 plus whatever else it destroys, which means even if it destroys a 5-6 cost card, that's a 4-11 worth of stats. That's kind of what makes Shang-Chi so good. This is going to be the card, I think, that takes movement up a notch, makes our friend uh, Kraken Null super-duper happy. But I think next season is going to be even better than this one. This one might be cooler, right? Because Howard is extremely cool. And uh, Living Tribunal offers a Galactus-like distinct way to play the game. While High Evolutionary is everyone's favorite card they're looking forward to, it's going to create new decks. This isn't necessarily going to create new decks next season. It's just going to take the power of decks and wave it up here. How do you play High Evolutionary or Galactus if they print spider Ham as is? All right, that is my 10 takes for this coming season. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and you check out uh, tomorrow's Snap Judgments and tomorrow's Snap Take when I'll be giving you some Nebula decks. Like and sub. See you tomorrow.